Planer boards are very popular in states where anglers are allowed to fish more than one line as they allow lines and lures to be spread horizontally to efficiently cover a fishing area. In Minnesota, where I live, only one line per angler is allowed and planer boards aren't used as much. That's probably a mistake as boards can help put more fish in the boat in certain situations. That's exactly what happened when Bob Jensen and I got together one day last summer to troll crankbaits for walleyes on a lake near my home in western Minnesota. Bob and I got started fishing, but the fish weren't too cooperative to start. Thinking maybe the fish were scattered and wanting to cover more water, we decided to troll one of our crankbaits on a planer board. We knew we were in a good area as we were marking plenty of fish on the sonar screen. We felt even better about our chances when we started to see some bait fish in the same area as the bigger fish we were marking. Walleyes around bait fish are often a sure sign of actively feeding fish. Not long after seeing bait and bigger fish, we got on the board. You know, I thought, I didn't think he was that big. You know what, nothing wrong with that. Boy, look at that, he just barely had it, didn't he? Oh man, look at that. Look at that. What's gill involved there? We started to see more walleye action, but these fish were all a year or two away from being what we were after. Not the right size yet. I like that white old gill. That bait kind of looks like a fish. Finally, a better walleye ate Bob's crankbait. One of the things that can be important when trolling is dialing in the preferable boat and bait speed. It feels like a little more weight in this one, Mike. Does it? Oh, a little more. It doesn't take much to have a little more weight, though. <laughs> yeah. You know? oh, there he is, the service guy. Yeah. He's How fast are we going? Like? Two miles an hour, Bob. Is there right. a range you like to stay in? 1.8. Point two seems like it's kind of thin. Yep. Yeah. Good. Oh yeah, that's not a bad thing, Bob. And look at that. Came out at the right time. We did the quick release. <laughs> I'll get the hook out of there. Today, we are not fishing typical walleye holding structure. Mike, you know, so much of the time when we think walleye fishing, we think structure, fishing the drop off, fishing sunken islands, especially in the summer. We're doing that a little bit differently today. What, what, what are we doing today differently? Bob, you're exactly right. Lots of times when we think walleyes, we think drop offs, the edges of flats, points, sunken islands. Today, however, we're not fishing those drop offs. We're fishing the basin out off the drop off where the lake bottom is relatively flat. The walleyes are out in the, these basins now. There's bugs and different insects hatching off the bottom which draws in bait fish and also the walleyes come to feed on those bugs and the bait fish. So we're out off the drop off a little bit different than how we typically fish but still very productive. If you look here, these tight lines like I'm seeing right here, those are one foot increments, so that's where the lake is dropping sharply. Those edges typically is the structure that we fish for walleyes. However, if you look out deeper, you'll see our boat. We're out in that flat bottom basin, and those walleyes are roaming out here. So today, we're targeting that basin. So if you look here, here's my depth finder with the lake map, all right? And over here is actually the sonar where I can see it's 25.8 feet deep. There's some suspended bait fish, some small bait up high. We're looking for those nice arcs right along the bottom that are those walleyes. We're just covering water. The fish are scattered, one here, one there, picking them off as we go. Oh, this is some good fishing action. When we come back, we'll be back for some more boards, cranks, and walleyes. Fishing the Midwest is presented by beautiful Cabotogamo Lake, gateway to Voyagers National Park. Evinrood, introducing the all-new Evinrood E-Tech G2, the outboard of the future. Rig Wrap, the world's best fishing rig storage solution. Ice Castle, you can camp in an ice castle, but you can't fish in a camper. 
Lake Cabotogama in Voyagers National Park is your year-round destination for experiencing nature at its finest. Enjoy the solitude of the pristine wilderness while having all the comforts of home available at the many full-service resorts. The fishing is world-class. So are all the other outdoor activities that are abundant in all the seasons. Cab is the perfect place for your family or group of friends, and Cab is an easy drive from anywhere in the Midwest. Cabotogama Lake in northern Minnesota. Discover Cab now. Introducing a revolutionary concept in outboards, a choice. Now with the Evan Rude E-Tech G2, you can choose unrivaled performance, superior fuel economy, and the cleanest combustion outboard on the planet. Choose from hundreds of color combinations to perfectly match your boat. And choose five years or 500 hours with no dealer scheduled maintenance. Experience the power of choice at chooseyouretech.com. What inspires the angler to return to the water's edge are not the countless fish that came before, but the one that lies ahead. Every time you fish, every single cast, every single day, beautifully crafted multi-species fishing boats unlike any other to catch any fish you're after. See more online and at your local FX dealer, Larson FX, where others have yet to go. Don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater. With Ray Marine Superior High Fidelity Chirp Sonar Vision, you'll never look at fishing the same again. You're already the predator above the water, now go find your prey below it. Ray Marine. Visit raymarine.com to get in on the action. catching an occasional perch, and that's usually a good sign that some walleyes are around too. Perch, it's gotta be. That's what those walleyes are eating. Yep. Again, those perch are probably out roaming here on those sure. worms. We came through lots of bait and bigger fish, and then one of those bigger fish decided to eat my crankbait. Bob, this is a big one here. Okay. I mean, it's not a monster, but this is. Uh... I'll get the next one. Okay. I think so. How deep was he? Well, that base again, 26 feet. Yep. And you know what? Came right through the little base. Yep. Still down there, Lee. Yeah, he's yeah. staying down. He'll we'll make a little run here. You get some northern pike doing this one? Oh yeah. Boy. Yeah, is this a one here, one there dealer when you get yeah. on them? You... Well, oh, look at them. Oh, that's a nice one. Ah, that's a nice one. Look at that guy. Oh, boy. Very good. You know, Bob, it, to answer your question, it's kind of a, uh, you see two or three in a little area, you yes. know, a little cluster, and then you go another, oh, it came off too. Oh, boy, yeah. You go another couple hundred yards, and there's another one. Yep, you know? Yep, that's, that's a nice one. one. All right, let's get this girl back. Yep. When trolling the basin, we often encounter suspended fish. Good sonar, like the Raymarine units we use, let us see the level the fish are at, and lead core line helps us control the depth our lures are fishing at. Lead core comes in colored segments, and each segment takes your bait around six to seven feet down in the water column. Cabela's Depth Master Lead Core Line does a nice job for this style of fishing. Raising our baits and spreading our lines with planer boards was starting to really pay off. Well, we were marking some bait and some fish up yes. high. Yep. And that is where that board really shines. Oh boy. Get it out away from the boat. Away from the boat. Keep the bait up high, prevent spooking, yep. yep. And it just gets the bait out away from the boat. Yeah, spread your trolling cover yeah. is what it does. Staying down a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, yes. Okay. Uh, there, no, there's more weight there now. Good. Oh, there he is. Yeah. See him? Yeah. Oh! Nice, yeah, absolutely. Good. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Good. Good call to go to a board out there. Yep. 
Today we're fishing open water, but right now it's winter across the Midwest and lots of us are ice fishing. Let's take a break and check out some warm winter boots that can help make our ice fishing trips more pleasant. Today we're out on the ice chasing walleyes. You know, one of the things that's important in the winter to staying warm, comfortable, and enjoying your outdoor pursuits is the right boots. These are the Cabela's Inferno 2000 pack boots. 2000 grams of Thinsulate insulation, so they're very, very warm. In addition, they're waterproof and they're lightweight. They don't have the bulkiness of some of your other boots. A great choice for your winter footwear available at Cabela's. The best products for your outdoor needs are at Cabela's and the Cabela's Outfitters have the experience to help you decide what products will work best for you. Now back to the fishing. Around supper time, the walleyes decided it was time to eat. Good fish. Mike, we went through kind of a dry spell there. I mean, you know, half an hour, no fish, and now all of a sudden they just popped. Sun's starting to get a little bit lower in the sky, you know, day's getting a little bit longer. Yep. Or shorter. Almost supper time. Yep, it is almost supper time. Glad they figured it out, huh? Yeah. He's not a monster, but he's not. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. Yep. Yep, and absolutely. We'll take those for day. Like today, Al, yeah, well, we'll take those all day. He's been eating stuff, hasn't he? He has. Look at He's got a little belly there. Today, we are catching these fish on Salmo Hornets. Here's what we like about these baits. Mike, you know, so much of the time when we're using crankbaits, we think of color and shape and size, but the action of that crankbait is a real important consideration also. You know, Bob, it really is. The action, I think, is probably the most important factor. Earlier this summer, when the water was first starting to warm up, the shad-style boats, Baits, the little executor, the little tighter, more subtle wiggle was catching them good. Now, however, we're looking at water temperature that's just about 80 degrees. In that case, a bait that really moves, displaces a lot of water, has an erratic action, is good. Salmo Hornet, these 4.5s, they got a rattle in them as well. Flat out catch them when the water is warm, just a great trolling bait. But you're right, action is probably, in my mind, maybe the most critical factor in a crankbait. Teamwork in taking off a planer board helps us keep the line tight and the fish hooked up. Now, one of the things that you do when you take a planer board off is, I'm not sure if he's there anymore. Yeah, he is. is he? I think so. But I yeah, well, yeah. hold the line, Bob reels down to the line, I don't give any slack to the fish. That's important to keep that fish hooked up. Still there, huh? He's still there. Man, raising that one bait has been the ticket, hasn't yep. it? Yep, getting up higher. Yeah. Oh, you see him back there? Oh. oh, yeah. I'm going to try to get him over this line here, Mike. Uh, don't tell me he came off. No. There. That's why I said don't tell me. Good. Yeah, yeah. Getting the up higher and going to that blue has really made a difference, it has. hasn't it? It really it has. has. Wow. As you can see, there are fishing situations where spreading lines and fishing high in the water column can help increase your catch. If you haven't tried planer boards, you might want to consider giving them a try as they can help you catch fish wherever you live. When we come back, we'll be on the ice chasing big perch. Fishing the Midwest is presented by Larson Boats, Larson FX, where others have yet to go. Selmo, insist on Selmo. Offshore Tackle, the leader in trolling technology. Clear Lake Area Chamber of Commerce, stay at the shore and explore North Iowa. Sunline, the strength to guarantee your confidence. Fish on! Come on, get together. <laughs> <laughs> a boat ride on the water, a 
concert in the shadow of legends, a day of fishing in one of the premier fisheries in the Midwest. These are just a few of the wonderful attractions Clear Lake has to offer. Nestled in northern Iowa, Clear Lake is known for its beautiful scenic landscapes, top-rated beaches, and yearly events. From the annual winter dance party to the blockbuster 4th of July celebration, Clear Lake has something for everyone. Stay at the shore and explore. We stress quality, we stress affordability. When people walk in, they, call, they say they look like a cabin on wheels. Made in the Midwest, four people in the Midwest. Impulse soft baits have dominated our bass fishing for years. And they're a big part of our panfish and walleye fishing. When the fish are aggressive, soft baits are the best choice, producing awesome fish attracting action. And you can catch several fish on one bait. That means more time spent catching and less time rebaiting. Northland's Impulse, a step above other soft baits with their secret scent that triggers fish to bite and hold on longer. Meaning we feel more bites and set more hooks. Jigging spoons are a great way to catch fish in the winter because they do a great job of calling in fish when fishing vertically through an ice hole. Just a couple weeks ago, we got together with Big Stone Lake fishing guide Tanner Arndt, hoping to get in on some fast fishing for jumbo perch. Here's what happened. There we go. Ooh, look at that guy. Oh yeah, there's a nice fish. There's, oh, there we go. Double up. Hey, you let me get the bigger one this time. Oh, yeah. You beat me just a little bit, but no, 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 no. both nice perch. Yeah, they are. And the thing that I'm liking is I'm seeing a whole bunch more down there. It takes a while to, for the bait to get back down to the fish, these spoons, like that. Get you right down. Oh, we're doubled up again. Are we really? Yep. Can you let me catch a bigger one again? Um, it's looking so, but we'll just have to see. You know, I'm gonna call them kissing cousins right there. <laughs> Man, they're fat. Today, we're tipping our jigging spoons with spikes. We also often tip spoons with minnow heads. In this week's Impulse Reaction, let's learn about an alternative to a live minnow head for tipping on spoons. I love using jigging spoons for my winter ice fishing. I tip my jigging spoons with minnow heads, but lately I've been using the Impulse minnow head. The Impulse minnow heads have the Impulse formula with the baked in scent. That means even if the bait stays out of the package, the scent still is there. The Impulse minnow head, the best alternative to live bait. That Impulse is good stuff. Let's get back to the perch. These fish are really aggressive and a jigging spoon is tailor-made for aggressive fish. Here's why. And Tanner, you told me earlier that when these fish are going, the spoon's a great way to catch them, isn't it? Yeah, you know, when the, the bite's aggressive, you get those bigger profile spoons, it definitely seems to get them going. And there that, we go. There you go. Double. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, that one just engulfed it. At times, when the fish are a little less aggressive, some of our smaller baits, you know, you and I both are fans of tungsten the Muska jig and various jigs. Um, when they're less aggressive, going to some of those smaller profile baits are good, but when they're going like they are today, these spoons. It's the way to go. Yep. Not only are jigging spoons good for getting lots of bites from aggressive fish, but Tanner also feels he hooks more fish with them. I mean, how big of a part of your arsenal is a jigging spoon? Well, a jigging spoon, you know, on all your days that you got aggressive fish, um, just with a bigger profile, um, you can get a lot more fish in a lot faster and you get better hookups. Some guys will use those smaller smaller hooks on a day where they're aggressive and you'll actually miss a few fish because of it. Right. 
So you're hooking more fish because of the bigger hook. Yep. And it seems like you kind of weed through some of the smaller ones because of the bigger profile of the bait. That's right? exactly right. Yep. yep. While Tanner likes spoons in general, he's especially fond of fluttering style spoons like the ones we're using today. Well, the action of this uh, flutter spoon, you know, it literally does flutter down the hole. Um, and while dropping fast is nice, um, getting that side to side flutter action really entices the bite. And I think it catches you more fish. Right. Well, because when that when that spoon, you know, there's these fish are kind of roaming this basin, and that spoon flutters down, man, it really does a great job of calling in fish from a wide radius. That it does. These perch are really going. When we come back, it'll be more perch on jigging spoons. Fishing the Midwest is presented by Cabela's. It's in your nature. Impulse. Excite the bite with scent, color, and action. Ray Marine. Don't just go fishing. Go hunting underwater. CrappieCentral.com. Northland Fishing Tackle. Made by fishermen for fishermen. No matter how hard you try, keeping your rigs tangle-free is, well, challenging. Well, not anymore with Rig Wrap. Staying tangle-free has never been easier. Just wrap, close, rinse, and store. Simple, right? Wow. No matter the rig, Rig Wrap has a storage solution to keep you tangle-free. From conveniently small to offshore extra large, you'll never worry about tangled rigs ever again. Rig Wrap, the world's best fishing rig storage solution. I started using Salmo Hornets more and more a few years ago, and in those few years, I'm catching more and more fish. There's just something about a hornet that makes a walleye or a bass or a panfish or whatever want to eat it. Hornets have a lifetime guarantee and they're hand tuned so they run perfect right out of the box. Cabela's has an outstanding selection of hornets in the best sizes and colors and the folks at Cabela's can tell you which ones are the hottest. Salmo didn't invent the crankbait, they just perfected it. Insist on Salmo at Cabela's. All right, Grant, you're in front, so stay low. Gus, keep those shoulder pads square. Marcus, eyes on the prize. And Joe, remember to smile. Now take your position. With nearly 80 years in professional photography, LifeTouch knows what it takes to get the most out of your players. Okay, okay just in just a little bit. All right, good. Oh, remember, there's no eye in team picture. <laughs> LifeTouch, photography for a lifetime. Don't just go fishing, go hunting underwater. With Ray Marine Superior High Fidelity Chirp Sonar Vision, you'll never look at fishing the same again. You're already the predator above the water, now go find your prey below it. Ray Marine. Visit raymarine.com to get in on the action. of this spoon is good for attracting fish, but because spoons fish heavy, they also are good when lots of fish are around. Tanner, you just hit on that a little bit. Talk more about you know, some of our tiny panfish jigs when the fish are finicky. I mean, they're great fish catchers, but if you don't need to use them and you can get by with the spoon, another cool thing is we've got all these fish in here. You can get that bait back down to the fish because the spoon falls pretty quickly too, doesn't it? Yep, with the, you know, a little heavier weight on your spoons, it gets back down there just as fast with a bigger profile, catches you bigger fish and more fish faster. Yeah, because you can get back to them, exactly. Today we are using buckshot flutter spoons. Here's a little more about this new spoon. I'm with Kyle Waterman from Northman Fishing Tackle and Kyle, the new spoon that's kind of caught the ice fishing world by storm is the buckshot flutter spoon. Yep. Tell us a little bit about it if you would. Yeah, so uh, buckshot flutter spoon, it's a S-curved spoon. It's made out of zinc, so it's a little bit less dense than lead, uh, but it's still heavy enough to flutter down and get down to the deep fish. Neat thing about this bait is that it has a glass rattle on the backside, so this is gonna be a little bit higher pitch sounding versus a buckshot rattle spoon that has a brass, brass bead on the back. Right. So that's that's another feature on it, uh, and then you know when you do rip this bait up, it's gonna flutter all the way down. Uh, it's it's gonna dart and you know dance different directions, and that's gonna you know trigger the bites. 
These spoons are really helping us attract fish and good sonar helps us see them and catch them when they come in. Plus, using sonar and seeing fish bite on the screen adds to the fun. Take a look at the screen of my Vexlar FL28. Here's my spoon as it dances just above bottom. And moments later, some fish appear. He's coming up. And he ate it. Ooh, and this feels like, well, they all feel good at some point in time during a retrieve, Tanner. This one is good. Nothing wrong with that. Seeing is believing as these fish show up and lots of them eat. Bait is up high, fish coming up. And the fish ate. Ooh, and then he made a run right at the boat. <laughs> God, that's fun when you can, there's, when you can just watch those fish come racing up to that spoon. Not a big one, but he was fun. Today, we're fishing out of the comforts of an ice castle wheelhouse. Sometimes when the fish are less active and more scattered, we will use this house as our base camp and a portable house for searching for active fish. We've been using Otter portable shelters this year and are really impressed. Otter's new Thermaltech layering system does a great job of keeping cold winter winds out and the heat in. And of course, Otter's roto-molded sleds are legendary for their durability. These fish are really going. Tanner and I double up and check out the jumbo that Tanner catches. I don't think he's as big as yours. might be a big one though. Look at that. I mean, that, this is right here, is probably a what? 10 incher? I'd probably give that 10 and a half, yeah. And look at the one you just caught. <laughs> oh, baby. You know, that's the thing. When the fish are going like they are today, that bigger bait selects through those littler ones. I mean, you still catch some of them. Yep. But if you want to increase your chances at the big boys when the fish are gone, a spoon's a great way to do it. Tanner Art guides on Big Stone Lake during summer and winter and works with his dad, Artie, renting ice castle fish houses during winter. Those ice castles make a day on the ice enjoyable and comfortable, even when the fish aren't as cooperative. On this day, they were cooperative as Tanner and I had a bunch of fish liking our jigging spoons. A jigging spoon is really a great bait for winter jigging and there's still plenty of time to get out and use them this winter. From all of us at Fishing the Midwest, we'll see you again next time. And remember to include a youngster in your next outdoors adventure.